So we've been looking at angle relationships when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. What we know so far is that each pair of alternate interior angles, when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, those angles are congruent. Each pair of consecutive interior angles or same side interior angles, those are supplementary. We know that each pair of alternate exterior angles are congruent. And we know that each pair of corresponding angles are also congruent. So now what we're going to do is just look at it from a different perspective. What if we don't know the lines are parallel, but we do know something about the angles? For example, if two lines in a plane are cut by a transversal, and we know that the pair of alternate interior angles is congruent, then we know that the lines are parallel. So if angle four is congruent to angle six, then we know that line Q is parallel to line R. If two lines in a plane are cut by a transversal so that a pair of consecutive interior angles is supplementary, then again, we know that those two lines are parallel. So in this case, let's say if angle four plus angle five equals 180 degrees, then again, Q is parallel to R. You see a pattern, don't you? <laughs> if two lines in a plane are cut by a transversal so that a pair of alternate exterior angles is congruent, again, we know that the two lines are parallel. For example, if angle two is congruent to angle eight, then Q is parallel to R, and one more. If two lines in a plane are cut by a transversal, so that a pair of corresponding angles is congruent, then the lines are parallel. If angle one is congruent to angle five, then Q is parallel to R. So let's put this into practice. Given the following information, determine which lines, if any, are parallel. So the first angles they give us, they say, what if angle one is congruent to angle six? First, let's find the transversal. So a line that touches both of those angles is line P. And then the two lines that create one and six would be like L and N. So L and N, if those are lines cut by a transversal, then one and six are alternate exterior angles. If those alternate exterior angles are congruent, then I know that L is parallel to N. Let's try the next one. The next one says that angles two and angles three are congruent, so two and three. Again, we have a transversal that touches both of those, and then we have the two lines that create the angles, Two and three then are alternate interior angles, and if those are congruent, then I know that line L is congruent to line M. What if angle three is congruent to angle five? We have a transversal. Those are created by M and N, and with those lines, three and five are corresponding angles. If corresponding angles are congruent, then that means M is parallel to N. Okay, let's try the next one. We've got angle two, and if that's congruent to angle six, again, we have our transversal P, and the lines that connect those are L and N. Those are corresponding angles again. So if two and six are congruent, then I know L is parallel to N. One more in this section. What if angles four and five add up to 180 degrees? Oops. Four and five. Well, with P as the transversal 
and M and N creating those angles, those are same side or consecutive interior angles. If those are supplementary or add up to 180, then I know that M is parallel to N. Just a couple more. It says find X so that L is parallel to M. I want those two lines to be parallel. In order for those lines to be parallel, I need some of those angle relationships, congruency or supplementary, to be true. So in this case, We've got these two angles here. Those two angles are alternate interior angles. And if I really want L and M to be parallel, those two angles need to be congruent. They need to be equal to each other. So I'll set them equal to each other. 6x plus 4 equals 8x minus 8. Solve for x. So subtract 6x from both sides. 2x. I'll add 8 to both sides equals 12, so x equals 6. Let's try the next one. So this time we're talking about these two angles in here. Now what relationship do those two angles have to have so that L and M are parallel? Those two angles are same side or consecutive interior angles, and consecutive interior angles need to be supplementary. They need to add to 180. So we will add them together and equal them to 180. And then we can combine like terms. So we get 8x plus 28 equals 180. Now we just have to subtract, right? Subtract 28 from both sides. So we get 8x equals 152. Divide both sides by 8 and you get x equals 19. So as long as x equals 19, those two angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. One more. The two angles we're working with are here and here. And right now, those are defined angle relationships that we've been working with. So we might need to do a little bit of moving around. I know that vertical angles are congruent. So really, I could say that this vertical angle is 7x plus 5, and I could say that this vertical angle is 5x plus 19. Now these two new ones, we have a special relationship for those. Those are consecutive interior or same side interior angles. And I know that same side interior angles are supplementary. They add to 180, so I can say that 7x plus 5 plus 5x plus 19 equals 180. Solve for x. So combine like terms, we've got 12x plus 24 equals 180. Subtract 24 from both sides. And I get, oops, I forgot my x. <laughs> 12x equals 156. Divide both sides by 12, and x equals 13. So very similar to what we've been doing before still working with angle relationships and parallel lines. Thanks for being here.